right, we like to welcome everybody to Spring Commencement 2022 for Warner Pacific University. And if we could take 10 to 15 seconds and let's give our graduates a roaring cheer. You did it, you did it, you did it, you did it, yes, they did it. Oh, yes, come on. Yes. We are so proud, godly proud of all of you. You've come through so many obstacles and situations, and you're here. You made it, and we're proud of you. Father God, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. For this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you, Lord God, that all of these students are proof, Father God, of the grit that you've created in each and every one of us, Father God. Thank you, Lord, that they didn't quit. Thank you that they pushed through, Father God, everything that was there. And today is all about them. Thank you, Lord God, that today they are launched out into their purpose, into their destiny. We appreciate all the professors, all of the staff, all of the faculty that helped them to get to where they are. Thank you for President Johnson and the vision that you've given him. Thank you for everyone that had anything to do with their success. And we thank you for the family and the parents and the friends as well father God we thank you for this day we thank you for this program thank you that you will be magnified in this celebration we lift up the speaker to you as well father God that he will speak those things that you would have for him to say and that it will fall on good ground we give you all the honor all the glory all the praise and we speak blessings amongst these graduates in the mighty name of Jesus we pray amen Sometimes you get wrapped up in the spirit and you get messed up. <laughs> All right, here we go. So today's scripture reading will be brought to us by one of our graduating students, Jamie Bravo Salas. Yes, Jamie is graduating with the BS in criminal justice and has a heart of compassion and courage. Let's give her another hand. Good morning, everyone. Today, I'm going to be reading from Psalms 84, verses 10 and 11. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tent of weakness. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. Not good thing would he withhold from them the walk uprightly. Now, I am going to read the Spanish version. Buenos días a todos los presentes. El día de hoy voy a darle lectura a un pasaje bíblico, Salmos 84, versos 10 y 11. Porque mejor es un día en tus atrios que mil fuera de ellos. Escogería antes estar a la puerta de la casa de mi Dios que habitar en las moradas de maldad. Porque sol y escudo es Jehová Dios. Gracia y gloria dará a Jehová. No quitará él el bien a los que andan en integridad. Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Commencement is one of the longest standing traditions in the history of higher education. While this ceremony celebrates the achievements and triumphs of the past few years, it is mostly commemorated for marking the beginning of an exciting future of vocational service. Our graduates today, like thousands of Warner Pacific Knights before them, are charged to be mission-driven leaders who will change the world. It is now my distinct honor to welcome our eighth president, President Brian Johnson, who will give greetings. Thank you, Miriam. 
Greetings, everyone. Good afternoon, and good afternoon to my spring 2022 commencement graduates. Let's once again give them a round of applause. We will be celebrating them throughout this morning, I'm sure throughout the afternoon, throughout the evening, and throughout the weekend, throughout Mother's Day. But there are some other groups of people here that I'd like to also celebrate. First of all, I would like for the parents, if you are here or you served in some capacity in relationship to either of our graduates in terms of parents, I'll get to partners and spouses and children, but you also, as we approach Mother's Day, I'd like for you to stand right now and I'd like for you to be recognized by this entire audience. So parents particularly, or those who serve, grandparents, Thank you. We ask for you to stand and be acknowledged because we know that on many an evening when they were thinking about giving up, Pastor Peterson talked about those obstacles and overcoming. We know that you were one of the first phone calls they placed, amen? I also at this time would like for spouses and partners and wives and girlfriends and boyfriends even, if you'd like to stand and, and be acknowledged at this time, please do so. You guys are also important. As I assure you, many other nights where you probably can't share everything with your parents, they are sharing with you. And we thank you for being willing ears. How about now, children of our graduates? If you're a child, if you're being taken care of by our graduates and you're here to support mom and dad, I want you to be acknowledged. I want you to see what you can be today. Your parents, your stepfather, your father, your stepmother, has embarked upon a journey that you are witnessing in real time, and we will expect for you to be embarking upon a similar journey here at Warner Pacific University in the future. And lastly, all relatives and everybody that's here to support one of your graduates, I'd like for you to stand up and be acknowledged and recognized today. You've traveled here. <laughs> Wonderful. Many of you blew up our phone lines asking for extra tickets, but I'm believing God that we're going to have to have a bigger place than what we have now. And we thank you for being here. At this time, I welcome you, and, and there is one last particular group that I need to acknowledge, and these are the individuals that are the primary, as it were, individuals who were instrumental in ensuring that your graduates have walked across the stage. Our illustrious faculty, will you please stand and be acknowledged. Please join me in congratulating and acknowledging Warner Pacific University faculty. I talk a great deal about Warner University being the best, you being the best and brightest, but it first starts with having the very best and brightest who are serving as our primary teachers in our learning, teaching learning environment. And then lastly, I also would like to acknowledge our executive team, our staff members, or staff members throughout. So executive cabinet members as well as staff members, will you please stand and be acknowledged? And they are spread out. Many of them serve in enrollment. They serve in financial aid. They serve in fundraising. They serve in student success and engagement. These are the individuals that also uh, human resources. These are individuals who play an important role. And last but not least, as represented on the platform, we have a university board of trustees. Most of you come and you see the guy in the blue robe as being the leader and the visionary, but there are board members here who represent the university. Some are graduates. In this case, two of them who are here on the platform with me are graduates.
But the board of trustees serve as the stewards of the institution, as individual presidents come and go, as leaders come and go. These are the stewards of your university who will be here as a representative body of you and the future of the institution. And at this time, I'd like to have all board of trustee members stand, particularly the chair of the board, Michael Moreland, and also the vice chair, Rolando Cruz. Join me in giving them a round of applause. And at this time, I probably should acknowledge two other important people that's important not only to me, but also to our speaker and also to the board chairs. Uh, I'd like for the spouse, the first lady of Warner Pacific University, Shamika Johnson, to stand and be acknowledged and recognized. We have Sophia Luke, who is the spouse of Derek Luke, who blessed our employee community on Friday in chapel, and you talking about what a blessed time it was, it was a blessed time. And she's a native Oregonian. Please stand up, Sophia Luke. We have Emmanuel, their son here, and he's busily reading the iPad, but I assure you, Emmanuel is someone who also can offer some words. And last but not least, the board chair's wife is in attendance here, and we would certainly like for Mrs. Moreland, the board chair's wife, who also has to play a significant role here to be acknowledged. Please acknowledge <laughs> Mrs. Moreland. Once again, we are looking forward to a wonderful, wonderful event that's celebratory and gives God all the glory. And as a reminder of what Jamie says, the Lord God, he does indeed give grace and glory. Rest assured, you will have no glory if you have no grace. And do not ever say that you have the Lord's grace and there is no accompanying glory. Grace and glory go hand in hand. And we are an institution of grace and we are an institution that will reflect his glory. Without further ado, I'd like to invite the board chair, Mr. Michael Moreland. Please join me in giving a round of applause. Good morning. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Good morning. Good morning. All right. I know you all are ready because you already got your celebration started. So, um, you know, everybody was coming in. On behalf of the Warner Pacific Board, I'd like to welcome you to this uh, spring 2022 commencement. Uh, I know, you know, this is uh, the weather outside is a little gloomy. That's what we Oregonians call liquid sunshine. Yeah. And so, but, um, but I'm confident it is going to be a bright day in here bright day in here as we celebrate all of these graduates. So again, I want to also offer our thanks from the Board of Trustees to the family and friends who've come out today and who've supported and encouraged these students uh, as they've gone along the way. Certainly, as has been mentioned, and we all know the last couple of years, two and a half years, has been, um, it's been very difficult. And it's taken a lot of grit, graduates, and a lot of commitment, perseverance to get to this point. And we are very proud of each and every one of you, and you should be proud of yourselves. You should be proud of yourselves. So I'd like to take this opportunity on behalf of the Board of Trustees to also thank the faculty and the staff, Dr. Johnson, for all the great work that you all have done and put in and invested in all of these students. It's an investment. We're investing in our future of our, of our city and of our country and all of you. And so we thank you for making that investment of time and resources. So on behalf of the Warner Pacific Board, congratulations to all of you graduates. And again, welcome. Today, we are providing special recognition to some outstanding individuals. But first, let me, but first, <laughs> let me draw your attention to page eight of your program where you have divisional awards. These students have been honored by their faculty for being outstanding. So please, let us give them a round of applause. Thank you. We'll now proceed to the institutional awards. The significance of these awards is described in the program. Okay. The first award is the Wilma I. Perry Award for Transformation. Okay. 
I am pleased to announce this year's recipient, Tiffany Coffey. Uh, Tiffany, please come and get recognized. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tiffany is graduating with a Master of Arts in Teaching. She's an outstanding educator who helps her students become passionate and excited about writing. She develops strong, caring relationships with her students, hence motivating them to learn and grow. Our second award is the Milo L. Chapman Award for Service. I am pleased and honored to announce Javier J. Mingita as this year's recipient. Jay, please join me on stage. Jay is graduating with a BA in Ministry and Community Engagement. Jay has faithfully served as the student chaplain throughout this year and has contributed to the campus and the community in several roles. If you know Jay, she did everything. Yeah. Jay's service has been one with enthusiasm and joy, and this award is given in recognition of Jay's life, which is full of faith and a heart for service. Congratulations. Our third award is the Marshall K. Christensen Award for Academic Excellence. Okay. I'm pleased to announce this year's recipient, Emma Foster. <laughs> Emma. Emma is graduating with a BS in Kinesiology and Sports Medicine. She's an excellent student who is collaborative, adaptive, and innovative. This award is given in recognition of Emma's academic excellence and a creative, relational approach to scholarly pursuits. Our final award is the A.F. Gray Award, named after the first president of the institution. The recipient exemplifies the mission, the vision, and the values of Warner Pacific University. It gives me my distinct honor, because this is an award that the president ultimately selects, to announce that Gabriela Rosa Navarro as this year's recipient. Gabby, please come forward to be recognized. Let me give you some remarks about this wonderful student who's receiving this award. She's graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Nursing. She has demonstrated a strong academic performance and professional practice as an aspiring pediatric nurse. She consistently demonstrates integrity and professionalism, and she exudes kindness and compassion. This award is given in recognition of Gabby's scholastic achievements and her warm and her loving heart. Once again, will you please join me in congratulating her on the re being the recipient of the AF Gray Award. It is now time to hear from two of our student speakers. They're drawn from our class of graduates this year. It is a difficult task to choose only two students for this distinct honor, and as each graduate has its own unique story to tell about how God has been with them on this journey. Our faculty have nominated exemplary student speakers to represent their peers and share with us today regarding their academic journey. 
Our first student speaker today is Jaron Jones. Jaron is graduating with a BS in sports management and is proactive and he's a critical thinker with an insatiable des desire to learn. Like many of our students, he has made many personal sacrifices to pursue his degree and will be speaking from his experience as a student in our traditional program. We will all be blessed and inspired by Jaron's words today. Without further ado, please join me and welcome Jaron Jones to the platform. Good morning, everybody. All right, so excited to speak with you guys today and nervous. <laughs> as long as I have just a minute it now. All right, so in 2009, my college career started with signing a letter of intent to play college football at a high level and with dreams of making it to the NFL. Within two years of that commitment, I quit. Now, if you would have asked me back then, 18-year-old Jerron would have had a long list of excuses like, I'm tired of the, student gr of the grind of a student athlete. I'm tired of sitting through lectures. I don't have a strong support system, and my father isn't in my life. However, the reality of my problem came down to two things. I was too prideful to accept help from my support system, and my why, the thing that fueled me and motivated me the most, was not spiritually fulfilling. For the most part, my why was about I, a singular vow that stands alone meaning my reasoning behind why I wanted to become successful were strictly selfish. On top of that, I had a strong belief that I couldn't rely on my family or friends for the support, that the only way I was going to be able to achieve the career that I wanted and making the money that I wanted to make was if I did everything on my own. I let the egotistical and prideful way of thinking consume me, so much so that I blamed my family, who I viewed as inferior, for my lack of progress and moved away from the first opportunity I got. So at 22, I packed up my pride, my ego, and my PlayStation, <laughs> and moved to Oregon with a two-year plan to finish my education at Portland State and become a successful sports agent. In year four of my two-year plan, I had deterred from returning to school, managed to earn a high-paying job in social work, and I was living on my own. But unfortunately, I was battling suicidal ideation. Now, how did a 22-year-old who came from a loving family, a boatload of friends, and having all the confidence in the world go to being 26, depressed, and spending multiple nights in a week crying in his apartment alone, begging for his life to end? It's because in the process of trying to achieve his goals, he isolated and pushed people away. He, the, the people who wanted to see him succeed just as much as he wanted to see it himself. Now, I want to take a minute to tell you all that there is nothing wrong with leaving your hometown or even taking a step away from people to reevaluate. Sometimes those steps are necessary to reach the next level in your life. The mistake that I'm trying to prevent some of you from making is thinking that you're going to be able to achieve all the dreams on your own. Like I stated back then, my why was fueled by I. I wanted to prove stereotypes wrong. I wanted to say I achieved it all on my own with no help. I wanted to be successful for the money and the fame. And I'm telling you guys here as a, as a living testimony that when your why is based on selfish and egotistical things like that, it gets played out after a while. Those type of motives will burn you out, cloud your judgment, and take your mind to places that they have no business going. Through my darkest hours, I was humbled and learned that I can't do it alone, that I needed my family and my friends. At my lowest, my why became congruent with what Heavenly Father intended for me. My why, my why no longer operates under contract, but under covenant. When my why was under contract, it meant that it was okay for me to quit, that I could opt out when things weren't going the way that I thought they should be going. It's easy to break a contract because the relationship and the motives are about benefiting one another. However, a covenant 
isn't easy to break. It's a spiritual agreement. It's a, a pledge under covenant has all your integrity, discipline, and core values attached to it. When operating under covenant, the relationship and motives are about supporting, not benefiting. So once I pulled out of the dark place by the grace of God, I began my journey to fulfill my newfound purpose of being a resource and mentor for the younger generation in my community. To achieve this, I thought it'd be beneficial to return to school. When I was looking for my next institution to attend, I wanted to find a place that challenged me both inside and outside the classroom. A place where my professors were going to educate me beyond the linear stuff that comes from an overpriced textbook. A place that would help me stay true to my new spiritual agreements. And in my two year journey at Warner Pacific, I received all that and more and I am grateful for the support of this institution. I would like to thank past professors like Dr. Hubbard who sold me on attending Warner Pacific current professors like Cassie, who provided her classes with snacks and reminded us daily that we are important and not alone. <laughs> I also want to express gratitude to the professors that I never took classes from, but recognized me at my serving job and left generous tips. <laughs> and a special shout out to my guy, Professor Jason Francis, who has been a life-changing mentor. Your long-winded class lecture, after class lectures, may have caused me to be late for work frequently, but they were insightful and kept me hungry. The educators that are here on staff is why my peers and I will grow to reach milestones that, probably didn't, that we probably didn't believe to be possible before attending here. And for that, I wanna say thank you. I would also like to thank my family. Thank you, mom, for all the sacrifices you made as a single parent and for always being a strong provider for my siblings and I. Thank you for my older si siblings, Charles and Hanesia, for being there for my mom, for being there for me when my mom couldn't, and keeping me on track whenever I s attempted to stray. And a big thanks to my, younger, my youngest sibling, known as the twins. You ladies have been the biggest motivation in my life, and I hope Big Brother was able to prove to you that all things are possible. Lastly, I would like to thank Holly, who has been an amazing support, supportive piece to my foundation. You took a chance on me in my darkest hours, and I hope with this platform I'm, that I'm provided here with today will, will give you a return on your investment. So in closing, fellow graduates, take a moment to look around you. All the support that you have in this room let this moment be a reminder of the importance of embracing your support system. Surrounding you are family, friends, and faculty members that are contributing to your growth and success. Make sure you hug them and tell them thank you. We stuck with it despite the challenges the pandemic brought. We succeeded despite the journey not being traditional or the way we intended. We took the road less traveled, a road that will, will forever be etched in our memories. And as you are as you are about to embark on your next road, I encourage each of you to be an inspiration to someone else, just as you have inspired me. Congratulations, class of 2022. Well done, well done, well done. Wow, what a story. You know, I'm always inspired by the definition of an overcomer. Mm -hmm. You can't overcome something without actually having something to overcome, amen? amen? Bless you, Jared, and thank you for those wonderful words. <laughs> Our second student speaker today is Michelle, Mikael Kim. Mikael is graduating, I got it? Ah. Presidents actually can do some things, huh? She has a passion for teaching and learning. She has a BS in early childhood elementary education, and she loves working with students. Mikael represents the Professional and Graduate Students Program today. This program serves our adult learners who take courses either in the evening or online. Like all of her classmates, she has balanced many responsibilities while pursuing her degree. We look forward to hearing her words of wisdom and experience.
Please join me in welcoming Mikael Kim to our platform. Hello, it is an honor to stand in front of um, the graduating class of 2022. Thank you to all who have come to support and celebrate with us today. My name is Mikkel Kim, and I am so happy and so proud that I am finally graduating. <laughs> I want to start with these three words, don't give up. 30 years ago this August, I stepped onto college campus as a freshman for the first time, not knowing how, how long it would take me to graduate. In college, I got married to my husband. We planned on finishing college together, but God had better plans. My two wonderful children, Jonah and Janelle. So while I had two kids, my husband finished his degree and my college education was put on hold to raise my kids and to work. About 17 years ago, I was hired at my kids' elementary school as an instructional assistant, or IA for short. It was in this role that I fell in love with working with students. <laughs> when life brought challenges my way, the students that I worked with were my energy, joy, and motivation to help me keep pressing on through the tough times. If it weren't for working at school, I wouldn't have realized how much I myself love to learn. Through my experience working as an IA, I realized my dream career and calling to be a teacher. In order to become a teacher, I knew I had to complete my degree. Yet in my attempt to pursue my dream, I felt defeated time and time again as I tried to find a way where I could still work while also earning my degree. After numerous attempts, I had almost given up on my dream. That was when Warner Pacific University began partnering with school districts to provide educational pathways for IAs like me to become teachers. Thankfully, the school district I worked for was one of those districts Warner Pacific partnered with. Thus, I began what would become a milestone of my college career. Our cohort started out in one of the upper classrooms of Ron Russell Middle School. But as in much of our lives, everything changed with COVID. We had to shift to online classes and make significant changes like everyone else in the world. Our first online class was an integrating ed technology class. Woo! The countless hours spent trying to create flipped classroom, record lessons through PowerPoint, upload videos onto YouTube, and learning team projects kept me busy and sane throughout quarantine. Although COVID has taken a toll on many of our lives, mentally, physically, emotionally, and unfortunately, quite liter literally as well, the relevancy and the timing of the class could not have been better. School will always be school, but Warner Pacific was more, much more than that to me. Our professors intentionally created spaces that were safe for us to open and be vulnerable in. Because of this, relationships were built in our cohort where we could honestly express our thoughts, opinions, and feelings about our personal experiences, as well as our reactions to current events. Two pertinent examples that influenced me are the death of George Floyd, which emphasized Black Lives Matter and the increase in Asian hate crime. As an Asian American, it wasn't until my Warner Pacific classes that I got the opportunity to share and be vulnerable about my own experiences. I not only learned how to express myself, but gained perspective on a myriad of topics by listening to my peers share their experiences as well. We learned how to be okay with feeling un uncomfortable and meeting others in that space. Together, my cohort survived through COVID, Portland protests, wildfires, and all of our classes. <laughs> Ultimately, these spaces 
these moments of connection with my professors and peers, while not explicitly listed in the curriculum, were some of the most impactful experiences during my time at Warner Pacific. Today marks a milestone in my life as one of my biggest personal accomplishments. I am a daughter of Korean immigrants, and in the family I grew up in, I am the first child to graduate from college. Graduating college is a dream for both me and my parents. But interestingly enough, in my family with my husband and my kids, I am the last to graduate. <laughs> so you could say that I am both the first and the last to graduate college in my family. I could not have come this far without the sacrifice of my husband who cooked many meals for us and with the support of my kids who cheered and encouraged me on this journey. I want to especially give credit to my daughter, who edited many of my papers, including this speech, <laughs> and encouraged me to show up as my best self, even when I felt unconfident or incapable. To close, Warner Pacific, thank you for sticking to your value to innovate toward experiential learning and academic relevance. If it wasn't for this partnership, I would not be graduating co from college. I would not have had the opportunity to be standing here. And I would not have dared to dream of being able to have my own classroom. Warner Pacific, I dare to say, you've given me the hope to dare to dream again. And last but not, le not least, professional and graduate studies graduates of 2022, we made it. <laughs> As, as working adults, we've experienced a lot, personally and professionally. You all are some of the most hardworking, deeply caring, and resilient people I have ever had the privilege of spending time alongside. Let's keep doing what we have been doing and live our lives to the fullest, to what God has called us to do. And always remember, it is more blessed to give than to receive. This year especially, we have been reminded of just how precious the gift of life is. As we give to others in our work and in our daily lives, let us never lose sight of our calling and our purpose during our short time here on Earth. Graduate class of 2022, I want to bring us back to the three words I started with, don't give up. Knowing all of you, I know you all already know have a deep understanding of that statement. So I'd like to add three more words. Dare to dream. No matter who you are, no matter how old you are, and no matter what life brings your way, don't, just don't give up. Dare to dream. As we leave and start our, our diverse journeys, let us go, let us grow, and let us shine. Thanks so much, everyone. That was a wonderful, wonderful testimony. I don't think I've ever met a student who's both first and last in her family to graduate. We gotta follow up on that particular story. It just shows you the, in many ways, the dynamic hand of God. Os Guinness says, be who you are, but become who you can become, amen? Just because you start somewhere doesn't mean you have to end there, and I think, Mikael represents that. So thank you for those wonderful words representing our adult and PGS program. Now, to the important part of one of the roles of a university president is to bring you individuals who, as you commence, many of you are here to celebrate an end to college, but in many ways, what we prepare you for is a commencement into your career and your calling and the purpose that God has called each of you to serve. And it is my distinct honor to bring a, not only a brother in the Lord, but a friend, a colleague, uh, someone we have all 
been blessed by if you've watched any of his movies. I know some of you like Antoine Fisher, but I kind of like the one when he played Puffy a little bit because he showed a little, I was able to act like I'm cool with some of my students. And then he played Biker Boys. And there was another, uh, several other movies that I think if you look up his repertoire that will speak to, in many ways, the range of characters that he represents. And in many ways, that's in some ways what we believe part of the grace of the God and through his son Jesus and through the gift of the Holy Spirit that allows us to do a whole lot more than we could ever imagine. And it's with that I'd like to say, Derek, we welcome you to Warner Pacific University. We will be going back to our faculty to make a request of them to honor you with a degree of Doctorate of Humane Letter Letters. Give them a round of applause for that. And we do so because of your vast contributions that you've made to society, but most importantly, doing so as a Christian. You may have never heard of his Christian faith. You may have never seen him talk publicly about what he does, and he does it quite often. I attended a few Bible studies with him. But what's most important is the works you carry out into the world. People will see you based on your excellence. And I think there is no greater calling, no greater testimony, no greater evangelism than to be excellent in the thing that you do. And our speaker today, Mr. Derek Luke, is certainly that. So would you please join me in giving him a warm Warner Pacific University welcome, Mr. Derek Luke, soon to be Dr. Luke. All right, what's up, y'all? Um, I um, I find myself on uh, many uh, podiums, uh, many stages. Uh, some of them are sound stages. Um, some of them are uh, these uh, stages. Um, but um, the most important stage uh, in my life is my faith in Jesus Christ. Um, you know, uh, on my way coming to you guys um, to uh, speed it up, um, I was in the back room and I uh, don't know whether it was my wife or President uh, Johnson, but uh, somebody suggested that we pray. And um, as um, they begin to pray, <laughs> I begin to I begin to weep um, because um, I could I could sense uh, God's uh, calling on uh, your life but I can also sense them in the calling on mine. A um, uh, long time ago, I was in service, and you know, I was just being me, I was just chilling, and uh, this woman came up to me, and she said uh, very profoundly, uh, <laughs> profusely, and aggressively, she said, you are a minister that acts. You are not an actor who ministers. And uh, that uh, uh, got in me, it got in my bones, and I tried to shake it out. And uh, since I was uh, maybe about nine or 10, uh, I remember my mom said, she said I was in the front room uh, I'm from uh, Jersey, and we lived on the first floor. And I would, you know, I was watching TV. And my mom said I was about nine or 10, and I came out and I said, Mom, I wanna act. And she said, um, well, son, you know, uh, you know, if this is a desire that you have when you get older, then I support you. But I have three boys to raise, and uh, I can't take off work to take you to 
um, acting. So from that time, for me, that was a blur. I do not remember asking my mom to act. As a matter of fact, I went to California. I was in my uh, 20s, 20, 21. And I remember sometimes thinking about uh, going back, but I said, I can't. And my mom began to share a story with me about my dad. My dad is from uh, South America. He's from Guyana. And, uh, and she began to tell me things about my dad. And we've all heard things about our parents. And, um, you know, but this particular time, it rung very loud. And she said, your dad uh, had a call to act because I thought, you know, in my family, there are a lot of teachers, there are a lot of uh, musicians, but specifically to act. And, um, and she began, so she shared that. And so it made me go on the inside. Um, I did not have a degree in the arts. Um, I just, you know, had a degree in hearing from him. And, and from hearing from him, it also comes with steering from him. And so I was hearing from him, I was hearing my mom, and she was telling me about my dad. And I remember reading a story about, you know, Abraham and how God had called Abraham from his country, what he's familiar with, to a place that he's not familiar with. But there was something that interesting that happened to Abraham. He got to the place of his grace. Um, he got to the place that he was supposed to occupy, that space. But he did something interesting. He called upon the Lord. So if you've ever been in a space or if you've ever been to Hollywood or pursuing your dream, you get to that point where you call on him. And, you know, I, 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 I called on him um, because I had a question for him. You know, if you look out into the world, uh, being a man, being a, happened to be a man of color, and you see, you know, opportunity, you see the area where you're from, you see some of the guys that look like you, don't look like you, and, you know, we use the word hustle. Hustle means you do whatever you gotta do to do what you gotta do. And so I saw a lot of people where I was from, they was what we call hustlers, and we took pride in saying we was hustlers. And, um, but what happened to me is uh, God was changing my hustle and how he was, he was changing my hustle. And he says, Derek, everything that you've done up to this point has been your own self and your self effort. What you will do from this point will be what I have done in my self effort. And so it formed a relationship between me and him. Now I grew up in church, but I never did the church. I was, I was totally, or I tried to be totally homeboy, totally street, and, but that didn't fly because my mom would, she would, in, she would interrogate my friends. <laughs> and they would come over and she would say, you know, she would feed them and give them little biscuits and jelly, like butter them up real good. And then she would say, hey, um, cause my older brother and my younger, he's uh, eight years younger, but she, was, she would, you know, get them all nice and, and smiling. And she said, did you know that my sons are spirit filled believers? And I'm like, oh. <laughs> like literally like, the food in my belly, my, I don't know the science with the di digestive breakdown, but the, you, literally I could see the food like just stop the wheel turning. And my friends would be like, just nonchalantly like, no, we ain't know it. And so my mom would look up and she was just with that one eye and I'm like, oh shoot. And she's like, uh, you didn't know that my kids were Christians? And I'm like, they would go, nah, nah, Miss Luke, you know, and she would look up again. 
And uh, I spent most of my life not wanting people to know who I was. I spent most of my life not wanting to share who he was. And so I was on my way to California and I was given this book by this author named Dr. Miles Monroe. And it was the first book I actually read because in my school, in my public school, uh, education was just a multiple choice. And uh, like my friend Chris Emden says, that education is not memorization, but it's the activation of the imagination. And I don't remember my imagination ever being activated in public school, no offense. So um, the beginning of my course of action, I remember I, I, I asked God after, I don't know if it was directly after reading this book, and this book was titled Finding and Fulfilling Your Purpose. And um, this question came out. <laughs> and I didn't even know it was a prayer. Again, I'm posing. I don't want nobody to know that I'm that because for me, in the Christian space, the Christian space was whack. My friends was having fun. Uh, even though they weren't doing the right thing, their outcomes just seemed glorious. And uh, my outcome did not. So um, I asked God, I was like, like, what were you? And, and the reason why I was asking is my mom and dad was in the middle of a separation. Um, I remember field trips where I didn't have enough money. And I was like, man, only if my, my dad was there. And um, I remember hip hop, hip hop's contribution to me, especially being a man of color where Tupac and Biggie Smalls were like my uncles. And, um, but even though they weren't, there was things that I respect about them. They were like, look, I ain't gonna stop until I'm not going, you know what I'm saying? Unless, until I have this and I have that. And it was something that I could just get behind. Even though I wasn't selling rock, I wanted to. Even though my mom wasn't, you know, Afini Shakur, I, at times I wish she was. But I asked God, I was like, look. I said, and this is for you. I was like, what were you thinking when you made me? See, whatever he was thinking when he made you is not what he was thinking when he made me. But whatever he was thinking when he made you is who he desires you to be. So I'm going into Hollywood and I am not trained. I am what you would call raw. I have no theater background. All I have is a passion and I have a desire. And I'm asking him, I'm like, could this be real? I'm like, acting is not like saving the world. It's not like, you know, it's not running for president. It's not you know, uh, working in the science, and being a mathematician. He was just saying, Derek, I have designed you and called you in the body as I please, not as they please, not as you please, not as you desire, but as I desire. So look, your gifts and your call is without repentance. It is non-negotiable. So I asked him, I was like, what were you thinking when you made me? And I felt like I couldn't get any answer. But something interesting happened. I was at a retreat. And part of the retreat was you had to fast. And on that fast, I'm going to tell you a moment that shifted the course. I call it course correction. And that's actually one of the names that God gave me when I was coming here. I was like, these hardworking, gifted, diverse talented study what do I have to say to them and he says tell them about your course correction so he began to share with me that we are in the generation of information but what you're lacking is revelation we're in the generation where we have the information 
but we don't have the revelation. Let me tell you what the revelation is. The revelation is something that is old to him, but new to you. Something that is old to him, but is new to you. So what I was asking God was a revelation on who I was. So I'm back. I'm at this retreat. Part of it is you got to fast. And I had never gone on a self-proclaimed fast. Like, no. And I grew up around the church where, man, you know, your mom kicked you, made you go to church. But I never had been in the position where I had to fast. Well, let me tell you what happened on that fast. I think it was around, it was a three-day conference, and I think around day two, the speaker says, I want you to sit next to somebody you know the least. And for, at that moment, I had settled down in my heart. And as I settled down in my heart, uh, an individual came and sat right next to me. Now, I didn't know whether to react to her or to him. What do I mean? As soon as she sat next to me, I heard, that's your wife. And like, exactly, I'm like, I'm like, did I hear what I just thought I heard? Like, my, my I, I hear people talking about God and, and all that, but I was like, I literally heard something like, audible and so that night you know I didn't say anything but it turned out they asked at the end of the night they says look uh because I told the guy here's what's wild my ex-girlfriend dropped me off <laughs> and to be honest you know I'm from the east coast so I'm still in my 20s I didn't have my license but back east like that's normal you know what I mean? Like jump on the train, you meet her on the, you know, on the J train, y'all take the A train, and then y'all whatever. So I'm I'm in California and, and driving matters. So my ex-girlfriend, we were like Rocky. Uh she still believe I had set it up that day, but uh I needed a ride home. So I said to the person, you know, quietly, I was like, look, anybody going back in my in my direction? And and he was like, uh, you know, turns and make the whole announcement. But turns out, babe, raise your hand. But this lady raised her hand and she says, I'm going in that direction. And uh, what was interesting was that she had a car full of dudes. <laughs> and I didn't know that all those dudes was negotiating their part with her. I didn't know that. Um, but again, remember, we're talking about course correction. Now, I have been asking God, what was he thinking when he made me? Because I wanted to know, was this gift, was this desire to act, whether, was, was it a hoax, was it a movie I saw, or was this your plan for me? And he began to be adamant, but what was weird, I didn't hear him say audibly, I've called you to act. But he said audibly, that's your wife. And so what was interesting was he says, I'm not sending you into the industry alone. I'm sending you two by two. And some of your industries may have their prerequisite may be for you to be alone, but he is sending you a power couple. So I'm like, but I'm asking about my, my career. And what I realized is that he gave me my wife and prophetically he said to me, said to my wife, listen, I'm about to do something that's going to happen quick. So within the first three years, uh, I, I booked a movie and it was my first film. And uh, it was uh, directed by Mr. Washington and it was called Antoine Fisher. And what I learned was I was working in a gift shop and my wife was actually going out on auditions. And he, it was weird because I had this responsibility, uh, but he had made me focus on the family. And so I'm like, well, how is this gonna work? Cause I, I have less time to grind. And he says, Derek, remember this is course correction. I'm changing your hustle. 
Now your hustle is the hustle of faith and trust in me. Just put a pin in that. Again, in the back room and before that, as I was coming here, um, I had been hearing this word and the word was called lion share. Uh, lion share. And I began to you know, uh, share with my wife about lion share and we began to pray together. And as we begin to pray together, that that word about lying share begin to really grow in my heart. And what came out was it was like God was saying, you're coming to share a word with my lions. And Revelations 5, 5, he calls himself the lion of the tribe of Judah. So I'm asking you, do you know your tribe? You are a part of the lion tribe. I am here to speak to, to feed to the lions. You are being called to a place of grace, but you're being called to a place you have nothing and you know nothing about. And you're going to need his voice. And his voice cannot be your second choice. It has to be your first. So I'm hearing this word about the lion's share. And it has something to do with a mentality, a shifting of the way you think. And so I got, again, all these things are happening. I'm in the back room. I'm, I'm weeping. I'm crying. And it's like, it seems like every time that I'm on a stage or a podium, I'm not allowed to, like, prepare a speech. Because God is like, I want to speak. I don't want you to speak, I want to speak. If you feel like you don't have anything to speak, that's because I have something to speak and I want you out of the way. And so, my wife, I hear God's voice. He tells me, tells her, I'm gonna do a quick work. I, my first film is called Antoine Fisher. I was working in the gift shop, and the, the portion that some people may or may not know is that it was a faith walk. And it started with the question, what was God thinking when he made you? And that's important. I know you got your degrees in your hand, but this world is too complex just to be led by a degree. You need his, his divest, you, you need his anointing, you need his guidance. And so I'm just here to address and to bless you and to speak to the things that God is commencing from my spirit to yours. Um, It's crazy because I uh, I lived eight or ten minutes from Manhattan, and I lived in I grew up in Jersey City, and I would go to New York, uh, get on the train, and I would walk past uh, NYU, and I was like looking at the building, going like, man, I I just want to go. The the Tisch department is there, art or creative department, and I was like, man, uh, I just man, that's like the place where I can develop myself. But my mentality, my focus was so far from being able to get accepted in the NYU. And, um, I'm, and one of the things that I always wanted to do was I always wanted to bring to my generation, not information, but revelation, because I don't want you to start where I had to start. I want you to begin where some of us has ended. And so the point of this speaking is to share with you the revelation that God has placed in my heart. Yes, babe. Uh, how many? What, um, 
Come here. Come here. Come here. Um, I, I want to introduce you to um, uh, a very important part uh, of my uh, of my existence, um, but I'm I'm standing up here, and I was attempting to close, but I was sensing that my wife had something to impart to you. All right, and that's our son, <laughs> and and this is our son Emmanuel Luke. He had his headphones on before, so go ahead and say hi, buddy. You know, um, I just thank God Rick, for, Rick. yes, yes. Sorry, uh, this is unconventional. Go ahead. Dad, you go ahead, go ahead. Dad, you do it. Go ahead. So my, my son said he wanted me to tell y'all how we talk in Jersey. Would, do you want to say it? You do it, Dad. So I, I, I told him this. I was like, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. I did it. He okay. said, oh, yeah. There you go. All right, mission accomplished, and that's your word. Good night. Um, I just really thank God just for the opportunity to be able to deposit words into your spirit, and thank you uh, to my husband for just being sensitive to the spirit of God, to the things of the Lord. Um, you know, I was sharing yesterday at the commencement speech just some uh, of my travel and life and, and how I got to where I am, um, and I, I, we probably have, what, about three or four minutes left? Where are we at in time? Um, you know, uh, clearly I am Latina, um, and my husband is not. Um, so where I was raised, you know, Mexican and black do not mix. Um, that's just, you just don't do that. You do not marry a black man. Um, we were, you know, raised up in the barrio and, uh, lots of gang violence and, and whatnot. And I don't have a, I, I didn't get a really big, huge education. Um, I was voted most likely to burn a textbook in high school. And um, when I went to college, I went to college to keep my C grade average simply to play sports. And, um, but it wasn't because I didn't like to learn, it's just that where, uh, where I was learning, I, I didn't see my face. Um, I've, I would have loved to have teachers that uh, look like me. I would have loved to been in an education system that um, was, I believe, spiritual. I believe that I would have had more of a uh, a chance quicker. Um, and again, you know, yesterday I shared a few things that you know where Derek and I are right now with our life. We are very successful um, spiritually. We are very successful maritally. We are very successful with the um, business that we have, our family, our faith. We are a full piece of pie. Uh, we didn't start this way. I start out um, homeless, living in and out of abandoned homes, um, living in and out of abandoned cars, living in the desert, um, started getting molested at age five, lasted for years and years and years and years, didn't tell anybody, I was too afraid to. Um, just started getting into drinking, smoking drugs, different things of that nature to just kind of like hide that pain, get away from that pain and feel that pain and nothing could replace that pain um, until one day I was introduced to God and Jesus and I accepted him as my Lord and Savior and he changed my life forever and I was afraid to speak in front of people and I was afraid that I didn't have anything to share and I didn't feel like I was worth anything. I had a major identity crisis. Um, I didn't want to be Mexican because when my parents got divorced, they moved to Oregon, which I love Oregon by the way, love Oregon, yes! Um, my dad lived in New Mexico, still does to this day. My mom is in Oregon, still is to this day. So here we have the full on uh, Oregon, which was Caucasian, and New Mexico, which was Latino. And um, so when I went to go live with my dad in New Mexico, I was just the white, whitewash. And then when I came to Oregon, I was just total Mexican, like my accent was thick. So I wasn't accepted in Oregon, I wasn't accepted in New Mexico, but so I had these like identity shifts, like what's going on. But um, here I am today, 
just by the grace of God that I'm able to say, I am loving being Latina. And um, I am also loving that I have a Caucasian family and I also have African American family and we have Asian family. And I just love the diversity that God has in all of us. And I thank God because God is, they say that God is the lion, right? They say that Jesus is the lion, the tribe of Judah. And the lion's share, he is the lion, and he wants to share with his lions his word. And the word for you guys today is be 100% you. That all the different things that you've been through in life, that wasn't, even the attacks that happened in your life, you know what? It made you who you are today, and it wasn't God that those negative things happened. But I tell you what, God can make that mess into your message and tie in your message, tie in your hair, tie in your swag, be who you want to be, who God has created you to be in this world to, to, to contribute your gift. Master that gift. Bring your sassy hair and your sassy nails if you want. And if you want to keep it conservative and tight because that's your flow, let that flow be you in all that you do. And when you have that gift that you know what it is, when you master that, be creative. Be creative. Allow that creativity to flow in you like never before because your gift was not for you. It is for those. You're going to feed people that gift. And that lion's share is that mentality. Your mentality is, I will not stop. Your mentality is, I will not quit. Your mentality is, yeah, you know what? I may have been kicked. I may have been stomped on. I may have been spit on. But you know what? I'm getting up. And I'm not going to stop. And I'm not going to commit suicide. You know why? Because I've got life in me. I've got air in me. I've got, I've got life that I want to breathe into people. I have a gift inside of me. This is your mentality now these days that you will walk forth and you will not quit. You will be victorious. And that is the lion's share mindset that you can, you will, and you will not stop at anything until you see your dreams, your visions manifested into the earth. So don't let anybody tell you you cannot and don't tell yourself you can't. And the minute you get an idea in your head, don't kick it down with, well, should I and did I? No, you get that vision vision in your head and you go forward and you drive full forward, full blast and make that happen. I love you. <laughs> Congratulations, graduates. That's all I got to say. <laughs> um, that's, uh, that's the woman the resort and I was fasting and God gave me that one word three words that's your wife and uh, I I it was a tremendous honor um, I want to thank my wife because I, I was up here and I just in my heart it was like God saying she was supposed to close and so uh, I love you and thank you Yeah, the, uh, the chairman of the board just said that was good course correction. <laughs> we all know that there's an authority that's higher than the board and higher than the president. And when he makes decisions, we honor them. And I joke that Marlo Waters, one of our wonderful employees here, I said that perhaps we had the wrong, maybe I didn't hear the Lord correctly and who spoke that came to speak. So I'm sorry, maybe we'll correct that. And I know in the future, I know we have individuals that would love to hear from you. All the same, let's thank Derek once again and his lovely family for their contribution. So at this time, we're here for an important period. And so what we'll begin to have now is the Dr. Shatiga to proceed to the side podium. She's already in place. Wow. And then we have Brother Pelosi, uh, Marty, Brother Marty Pelosi, our Dean of Education, uh, preparing to read names. And he will be in place. And is he in place? We are at the time that you have been waiting for, the conferral of degrees. 
There are few ceremonies that we enjoy more than the commencement and the joy of seeing you walk across the stage. So at this time, we begin to honor you, and I pass this on to my colleague, Dr. Miriam Shatiga. Thank you. It is now time for our graduates to be recognized. Would all the candidates for the associate degree please stand? Oh. Would all the candidates for the associate degree please stand? All right. Please be seated. Have, Thank you. Please remain standing. Oh, okay. And now I will speak to you. Having completed all courses of study and academic requirements pertaining to the associate's degree, on the authority granted by the state of Oregon and upon recommendation of the faculty, Warner Pacific University confers upon you the associate degree appropriate for your fields of study with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Now you can see. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Would all the candidates for the bachelor's degree please stand and remain standing? Having completed all courses of study and academic requirements pertaining to the bachelor degree, on the authority granted by the state of Oregon and upon recommendation of the faculty, Warner Pacific University confers upon you the bachelor degree appropriate for your fields of study with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Please be seated. Mm -hmm. Will all the candidates for the master's degree please stand? <laughs> Having completed all courses of study and academic requirements pertaining to the master's degree, on the authority granted by the state of Oregon and upon recommendation of the faculty, Warner Pacific University confers upon you the master's degree appropriate to your fields of study with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Please be seated. Mm -hmm. The graduates will now proceed across the stage to receive their diplomas from our illustrious president, President Johnson, Dr. Mati Palacios, uh, Dean of Education, and Dr. Gustavo Oliveira, Associate Dean of Education, who read the names. Leticia Aguilar, cum laude. <laughs> Tyshell Lombrea Blake. <laughs> Janie Marie Bocart, summa cum laude. Jamie Bravo Salas, summa cum laude. Brooke Nicole Brett, summa cum laude. D. 
Denisha L. Brown, cum laude. Caitlin Burris, summa cum laude. Diego Calderon. Dylan John Chambers, cum laude. Nathan Michael Christ. Stephen Anthony Davis. Cheryl K. Entman, cum laude. Anna Farner, summa cum laude. Sadie Lee Foster. Nancy Elena Garcia Ruelas, cum laude. Emily Francis Green, cum laude. Daisy E. Hall. Alexis Ann Harris. Lucas Theodore Higginbotham. Alicia Abigail Hinojosa Begar. That was Alicia Abigail Hinojosa Bejar Cum Laude. Thank you. Star Marie Johnson Cum Laude. Raquel V. Kep, cum laude. <laughs> Evi Kai Hao Okaleva jo Joel Kinimaka. Lloyd D. Neeland Jr. <laughs> Alnicia Lachelle Knox, summa cum laude. Nathaniel D. Landers. Annie Rochelle Rogenbach, magna cum laude. Marella K. Loy. Woo. 
Michaela Rose Martinez Cum Laude. Stephanie Martinez Cum Laude. Javier Dian Carrillo Mengita Cum Laude. Serena J. Murray, cum laude. Sahaya P. Miles Brown, cum laude. Diana Ornelas Daniel. Cindy Cristal Palafox Hernandez, Mana Cum Laude. <laughs> Douglas Guy Pearson, Jr. <laughs> Sydney Leanne Reagan. Stephanie Tamara Roberts, cum laude. Cortez Lewis Rodello. Nita J. Schlumpberger, cum laude. Sostenes Junior Segura. <laughs> Heather L. Swanson, cum laude. <laughs> Brady Stapleton. Paul Lindsay Tebron Jr. Thank you. Angela Marie Bates. Isabel Josephine Bauer, summa cum laude. Jonathan Bernard Berkemer, summa cum laude. Jawan Blevins. Shannon Cooley, summa cum laude. Adam K. Eckerd, cum laude. Veronica Gonzalez, cum laude. Christina M. Henry, cum laude. Christian Pierre Hodge.
Angela Looney Jenkins. Yvonne Kumu Kate. Louis D. Lane, summa cum laude. Zatoya L. Lang. Tyler Dwayne Lape, cum laude. Lydia K. Larson, summa cum laude. Oh. Alex Nevnoma Nana. Kathy Nguyen, magna cum laude. Robert Timothy Giles Palmer. Jet Parn Chrome. Cum laude. Annalie Rendon, summa cum laude. Kayla Rodriguez. <laughs> Donalise Maria Rodriguez Puzo, summa cum laude. <laughs> Tara Schlunager. Domika Shimaline Shadrin, Mount Magna Cum Laude. Yvette French Roberts. Miriam Hay. Courtney Evelyn Jackson, cum laude. Thank you. Mikkel Wanju Kim, cum laude. Congratulations. Harley Marie Lube, cum laude. Wendy Grace Reese, magna cum laude. Vanessa Milagros Rigo, cum laude. Elena Noel Smith. <laughs> Danielle Christine Traver, magna cum laude. Ch 
Chao Tui Va Summa Cum Laude. Heidi Marie Wilson, cum laude. Donna Miriam Smith Yarbrough, cum laude. Just one second. Devin Bryn Ameskia. <laughs> Brian Quasi Boteng. <laughs> Sophia Bangang Bui. Connor Robert Finch. <laughs> Emma Riley Rodebaugh Foster, summa cum laude. <laughs> Kylie May Gilsdorf, cum laude. Lyndon A. Harry. Jerron Joshua Jones. Hannah Grace Myers. Carlos Brent Nelson. Woo! Russ Pilot. Darian D. Santiago. Brenna Rose Smith. Matthew T. Stathis, cum laude. Hunter Van Cleve. Tyler Davis Williamson, cum laude. Mackenzie Maria Ancien. Rachel Borchois, cum laude. Gabrielle Rian Bowman. Michaela May Bristow, cum laude. Raquel Natalia Francesca Cortizi, cum laude. <laughs> Michaela Cheyenne Dennis, cum laude. <laughs> Madison Guile.
Shaylee Harwood, cum laude. Peyton Hergert, magna cum laude. Victoria Kisilev, cum laude. Emily Joy Kruger, magna cum laude. Emily Lee, cum laude. Christabel Lynn. Gabriela Rosa Navarro, cum laude. Lillian Scott Niedermeyer. Immaculate Okat Cum Laden. Bridget Alexandra Thurper Pronazak, Cum Laden. Deber Savundo, Cum Laden. Corey Renee Sachs, cum laude. Anna P. Savina, cum laude. Irazi Aguilar Martinez, cum laude. Blanca Itzel Ayala Aguilar, cum laude. Mami Banfo. Zara Anna Escutia. Amanda LaHaye, cum laude. Dora Ramos Vargas, cum laude. Zachary Michael Sias. Juan Antonio Vallejo, Jr. DJ Alex. <laughs> Heidi Ann Byers.
Adina Lynn Dandridge. Constance A. O'Brien Larson. Okay. Ashton Renee Porter. Karen A. Scott. <laughs> Sally M. Willoughby. We're getting there. Okay. <laughs> Edgar, Edgar Ochoa Contreras. <laughs> Amanda Edwards. <laughs> Patricia Marie Gaudet. David R. Jones. <laughs> Mariah Rose Olson. Cynthia Fambula Riley. <laughs> Cash Nita M. Spencer. Shannon Ann Strand.
Christy Burt. Tiffany R. Coffee. <laughs> Raquel Kalina Dorskind. Ariana Gonzalez. Lisa Lewis. Audrey S. Lungerhausen. <laughs> Jesse L. Manley. David Anthony Mazza. Right. Gabriela Mendez. Lisa Michelle Ostrowski. <laughs> Gradis Reyes Simon. Cody R. Sanchez. <laughs> Katie Wu. Once again, let's give all of our graduates a warm round of applause.
of the graduates please stand graduates we congratulate you on your accomplishments we also recognize that this is a shared celebration built upon the support and sacrifice of many individuals who have made this day possible at this time I would like to invite you to turn around and look for those that have supported you. Please give them a round of applause. Thank you, thank you graduates. Yeah. It is a long-standing tradition that after receiving a post-secondary degree, the cap tassel is shifted from right to left. So graduates, this is your opportunity. Shift your tassels, please. Uh, this signifies that they have completed all requirements for this degree, so they deserve it. And friends, it gives me great pleasure to present to you the newest graduates of Warner Pacific University. President Johnson will now address the graduating class. Greetings, you may take a seat. And this will be very brief. It's something that I share with many students as you enter in and as you depart. It's a constant theme of what I believe in. It's a constant theme in what I personally do in my own career and my own calling and my sense of fulfilling God's will. I am here to employ you as you commence into your future that careers alone fill pockets. Your career with your calling is what's going to fulfill you as a person. Your career linked with the calling, fulfilling that purpose is also going to help people. I'm here to employ you to not rest at your career. Your locations will change, employments will change, and that has no bearing on the calling of God that's on your life. When one opportunity ends and another one begins, go boldly because it's not the career that sustains you, it's the call of God. And beyond all of that, when you're walking in the call of God and when you're walking in the purpose of God, you don't fear any man. You don't fear any person and you don't fear any job. Because when God calls you to do something, it's a mandate that's beyond any person that's here on this earth. So I implore you to never stop with the job application. I implore you to never stop with a call because we still need to eat and feed our families. I encourage you to never stop until you're doing the thing that you know deep down in your heart God has called you to. Amen. At this time, I'd like to introduce one of those persons who is doing that very same thing. He's the vice chair of our board. He works at Nike. He's a man who's married to a lovely woman as well, Araceli Cruz, who has joined our staff. And I will tell you that if anyone that I know of that operates out of who he is organically and authentically as a Latino and a Christian and a person who is serving in the capacity of a board member, I am pleased that at this time he represents the alumni of Warner Pacific University and board, but for your purposes, he is someone that I certainly tell you, walking in his career, his calling and fulfilling a purpose. Please join me in inviting Rolando Cruz to the podium. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. I'm gonna keep this really brief because I recognize that I am what's keeping you from celebrating with everybody back there. So we're just gonna get Straight to the point, and I'll tell you that 10 years ago, I was sitting exactly where you're sitting, uh, graduating from Warner Pacific University. And three years ago, I decided to come back to join the board of Warner Pacific because as a first generation student, I struggled when I was in college. And I wanted to come back to make an impact so that people like my sister Gabby, who's graduating with you all today, 
have it easier than I had it when I was in school. Yeah, we can cheer for that. It's okay. So I, I guarantee you there's no room in Portland that looks like this room right now that says it's diverse. There's going to be graduations all weekend throughout the next month, and this is a very special room. There's no other room in the city that looks like this, that feels like this, that has this diversity, and we need to protect it because in order for Warner to be uh, to reach the potential that it has to reach, we all need to stay involved. So as you graduate today, as you move on to your futures, your careers, come back and share your gifts with the university because it's going to be better off because of you. So I'm here to uh, welcome you to the Alumni Association now that you've graduated officially. In the foyer outside, there's going to be a gift waiting for you. So stop by the table, make sure that you get your gift on the way out. And once again, muchas felicidades a todos ustedes. Bienvenidos a todas las familias que están aquí. Todos son bienvenidos en la universidad. Y esta es su casa. Y vayan a disfrutar su, su día. Muchas felicidades. Graduates, you have made it. Congratulations. Um, here is your last opportunity to sing the alma mater with gusto. So if you will rise and families and friends, please rise and sing along with us. The lyrics are on the second page of the schedule. All right, here we go. Nestled on Mount Tabor's bosom, glorious hood in view. Caris by Willamette Zephyrs stands Pacific true. Loyal to the Holy Bible and the Spirit's voice, cloistered in thy sacred chain. Students now rejoice From thy stately portals issue Ranks of stalwart youth Forth to tell the gospel message Heralds of the truth May thy glory ne'er be tarnished Nor thy light grow to thee, beloved Pacific, from our hearts all hail. Thank you. Well, if we could uh, remain standing, obviously I won't be with you long at all. We're going to let the party get started. Amen. Amen. Lord, we just praise you and thank you for everyone gathered here. We speak divine protection as we leave. And Lord, may the peace of God that passes all understanding guard our hearts and minds. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you.